In my last video talking about the Uyghur genocide, I briefly mentioned a YouTuber by the name of Jason Lightfoot, or Living in China. After skimming through a few of his videos, my YouTube homepage began getting flooded with recommendations from other similar channels, white people vlogging in China. There are thousands of videos like this, all with similar styles and content. They're all vlogs hosted by non-Chinese people, they all have weird Chinese subtitles, and they're all 100% positive about China. At first glance, you could be mistaken for thinking these are similar channels to the greatest YouTube vlogger, Bald and Bankrupt. Another white English vlogger who also explores foreign countries, chatting to locals. But where they differ is that the vlogs from China, unlike Bald and Bankrupt's completely objective view, are stilted advertisements for the country. And that's when I began descending a rabbit hole. Every one of these videos has an almost perfect like to dislike ratio, and no negative comments that I can see, unusual for any video on YouTube. The way they speak is stiff, like they're walking on eggshells constantly, and what they cover in their videos are hardly interesting subjects for vlogs. Sometimes they'll go to restaurants, tourist attractions, and speak to the unusually happy locals, but there are hundreds of videos dedicated to showcasing Chinese farming practices, wealth, and the country's pristine infrastructure. Again, not very interesting things to showcase in a light-hearted vlog. That's when I came across an article by the UK Times newspaper. Beijing funds British YouTubers to further its propaganda war. In this video, I've picked out and examined three YouTube channels run by foreigners in China to see just how bizarre and blatantly propagandistic they are. The first channel we'll look at, also looked at in the Times article, is Barrett. The first thing you'll notice when you watch one of their videos is just how unsettling they are, and even more so when you find out that these two are father and son, Lee and Ollie Barrett. They have over 250,000 subscribers and over 25 million views collectively. As a side note, they recorded their growth in their About section, gaining 100,000 subscribers from the time they started their channel in June 2019 to May 2020. That's less than a year. Not that I'm bitter or anything, but that is an exceptionally fast growth for any YouTube channel. But in all fairness, YouTube does reward people who upload frequently, and they upload 4-5 to five videos a week. Looking past the fact that they're father and son, which is quite impossible because it's really fucking creepy. Almost every one of their videos has an overtly political goal. For example, the West is desperate to destabilize Xinjiang. Xinjiang genocide, the campaign to take down China. Xinjiang cotton forced labor regime with a question mark in the title. What's interesting and somewhat worrying about Barrett is how calmly they present propaganda. For example, in the before-mentioned Xinjiang cotton forced labor regime video, Mr. Li Sr. says that the claims made by the West are at most inconclusive. He goes through the sources many people point to, saying that they claim to be independent, but I don't believe they are independent. He cites an article by Adrian Zenz, a leading figure in academia, considered one of the best experts on the Xinjiang internment camps and says he isn't credible because nothing he's ever produced has ever been peer-reviewed. A claim which takes about five minutes of googling to debunk. But I guess you can't do that when Google is blocked in your country. And he also points out that because he hasn't visited Xinjiang, he hasn't any clue what's going on there. And he's only ever visited Xinjiang some years ago for a very short period of time, I believe two or three weeks on holiday. Something which you'll see is a common argument of these channels. As if the Chinese Communist Party will open their arms to you and fully let you examine all their flaws instead of, I don't know, locking you up and psychologically torturing you. He then goes on to make other very questionable arguments about the credibility of the claims, mainly because those who are making them have links to Western governments, and that it must be because they want to destroy China, and that the Chinese government is simply responding proportionately. He then adds at the end, I also think it will be a great opportunity for some Chinese clothing companies to have a campaign saying that our garments are proudly made from, from Xinjiang cotton. 
His arguments have zero sources listed in the description and take a few minutes to debunk, but the danger is that he presents them so calmly, so boringly, and so dryly that if you knew nothing about what he was saying, you'd think that he was some thorough researcher and believe everything he said. And all of Barrett's political videos are like this. Dry, academic-like presentation with easily disprovable claims and zero sources. He also hardly blinks, which is quite odd. Between these serious politics are light-hearted, friendly videos chatting to locals and visiting tourist spots, all to give them the vibe of a nice little vlogging channel for the whole family. But not even these are exempt from propaganda, since they're always to show how rich and well-off the Chinese people are. According to the Times UK, these videos are sometimes funded and organized by China Radio International, a Chinese Communist Party mouthpiece. In one video, accidentally uploaded by the pair but since deleted, they and another YouTuber called J.O. Nation complain about their government-funded trip to a mountain being cancelled. Lee says, It wasn't until the second day they started talking about cutting the trip short by a day, and there was no real reason given for that. J.O. Nation says, They had to fit in more propaganda. Then Lee admits, They didn't say that, did they? But that's what happened. As an aside, J.O. Nation is another propaganda channel, but a lot more subtle. His videos are never overtly political, with the exception of one where he goes mad for people criticizing his pro-China bias. Whatever the case, I don't give a shit about you guys. I can't help all y'all. I can't, I can't make myself into something that pleases everybody. I will not shut up. I will not stop what I'm doing. Because there's nothing wrong with it. But his videos are entirely about Chinese agriculture, infrastructure, etc. Again, boring subjects for vlogs. But back to Barrett. According to Social Blade, Barrett earns anything between $7.3,000 to $116,000 a year from ad revenue alone, plus at the very, very least, $383 per month from Patreon, which is likely far higher since they don't make their earnings public. This channel, which I'll just refer to as Why China, I just uh, translated their name and it means Crooked Nuts Research Association. And according to Wikipedia, it's a pun because the Chinese word for foreigner sounds a lot like crooked nut. Fun fact. So, uh, yeah. Anyways. Why China has 232,000 subscribers and over 27 million collective views. It's run this time by a group of foreigners, not just one, and is extremely political. The most active of their hosts, as far as I can tell, is Raz Galor from Israel, son of Israeli businessman Amir Galor, who founded Infinity Group a private equity fund that operates almost exclusively in China and is partly backed by the CCP-owned China Development Bank. Is it relevant that one of the hosts of this channel's daddy is a multi-millionaire who works for the Chinese government? I don't know, you decide. Let's look at a few of their videos anyway. How to make a BBC-style documentary about Wuhan? Question mark. Another attempted takedown of the BBC, which you'll notice after watching as much Chinese propaganda as I do, is a common theme throughout. It tries desperately to make the BBC look dishonest, obviously because of their reports on the ongoing Xinjiang genocide. The first point they make is that the BBC cut their interviews out of order. Why on earth did you edit the interview like this? Is there any objectivity in your news reports? But... But that's exactly what this person said. It doesn't matter. Can't you just add more silent scenes and dubbing than cut out anything that does not make sense to the facts? I don't know or really care right now if that's true, but I find it quite ironic that they themselves very obviously cut their interviews in this very video. <laughs> <laughs> 
Their last four videos have been about Raz visiting Xinjiang and knowing what goes on there is uncomfortable to say the least. Again, they focus on how great the agriculture is there, particularly how well off the Uyghur cotton farmers are. He makes some more bullshit points like, look, they have a tractor. This can't be forced labor if they have a tractor. Guys, I think that the transformers are the labor here. And trust me guys, if there was forced labor, I would 100% show you guys, trust me, trust me guys, trust The video I visited three families in Xinjiang is even more disturbing and completely dishonest. He goes into the homes of Uyghurs in Xinjiang and films himself talking to them. Just look at their eyes. Look how uncomfortable they seem. As if this wasn't their idea, as if they're being forced to allow this stranger into their homes and film them. They just look like they want to get it over with and have him gone as soon as possible. What's more is what you see pretty blatantly at the one minute mark, something which uh, kinda gave me chills. Yeah, comparing that with satellite images, it's hard to ignore how much it looks like one of the camps. Overall, why China is just complete and shameless propaganda hosted by the son of a corporate shill. Living in China, my guy, Jason Lightfoot. I have to admit, ever since I discovered this channel during my research for my last video, it's become sort of a guilty pleasure for me. He has 103,000 subscribers and over 12 million views collectively, and is the most unsettling presenter of all the propaganda channels I've come across. To see how long he's been doing propaganda, I sorted his channel by oldest first, and found that he uploaded three singing impressions. Stevie Wonder, very superstitious, writings on the wall. Uh, Louis Armstrong, I see trees are green. Scan. Damn it, shut your mouth before I punch you in your head. Just let me get on with the goddamn rap already. I'm gonna punch your teeth and I'm gonna put your head in the trash and then I'm gonna make you sniff my asshole. And that. I'm like a muscle man, give me a protein can You wanna do it like me? Nobody can I kill you with my knife Get your wife, take her in the bed and take her life Mass destruction, seduction But anyway, his China vlogs didn't really get going until January 2015 Where he began uploading rather infrequently That was until about late 2019 when he began uploading several times a week becoming more and more unhinged with every video. Something you'll immediately notice is his bizarre way of speaking. He speaks in broken English with an accent that almost sounds foreign but not quite. Now that's not entirely odd on its own. Jason has lived in China for about 10 years as far as I can tell, and presumably has spoken Chinese all that time, which would explain why his English has gotten rusty and why he's picked up an accent. But what I can't quite explain is how that happened seemingly overnight. His video, When Will I Return to China, has him speaking pretty normal English with barely any accent. We're alive, on the ground, on the streets of England. We're in another city, we're in a very shitty, dark, dull city. But in his video afterwards, uploaded just 20 days later, he speaks with that signature brokenness. I'm gonna keep my mask on because I don't want to die. <laughs> um, shit got real the other day. Obviously I'm live on the ground, I'm, uh, we're live on the ground in China, okay? The corona outbreak, the coronavirus outbreak. Maybe I'm looking too far into it and there's some innocent explanation, but you have to admit it's quite odd. When Covid began in China, that's when Jason began turning aggressively pro-China and anti-Western, turning from light-hearted vlogs to overt propaganda. His favourite thing to do is walk around Chinese cities, pointing at everything and saying something along the lines of, look how rich China is, the West will never show you this. Just walk into a nice little underground passage here. Oh, what's that? Oh, not one single piece of litter and not one single homeless person. Hmm, interesting. Look at this, a, a tunnel like this. If this was in the West, Europe, America, it's just gonna have, there's gonna be homeless people, couple of crackheads, 
Maybe there's a maybe there's some gang waiting here to rob you. Look at the size of this bridge that we're underneath. In Guizhou province, you get a lot of massive bridges like this one uh, because of all the mountains. You can see the investment that the government's spending to build bridges like this or roads like this across Guizhou province to connect each city uh, together to improve the economy. This is the PRC, the People's Republic of China. It's the people in government, the people working in the farms, the people working hard in the factories and in the offices in the cities. It's the people that are making this country. And I believe that is one of the biggest reasons why you're seeing such an insane uh, speed of uh, China's development today. A game I like to play when watching him is spot the security camera. Look, here's five in one shot. Another thing he does constantly, one of his many wacky and hilarious running gags, is satirize BBC News. But for some reason he calls them BSB News. Here we are at one of China's crumbling dams. You can see over there that there are many cracks and it is about to crumble and the amount of pressure is 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 just intensifying and any second I can't find what that new acronym stands for but I'm guessing it's something hilarious involving bullshit Every time he does one of these gags he always talks once again about infrastructure and poor conditions Here we are at one of China's rotting farms yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a BBC report that tries to say China's infrastructure is crumbling or that China's poor. It's almost always a serious report about human rights abuses. Maybe I'm wrong, but something tells me that Jason making fun of the BBC's human rights claims would be a big no-no for the CCP. When the article from The Times came out that inspired this video, Jason had something of a crisis. His channel, according to him, was completely demonetized for having misleading titles. His views collapsed to almost nothing, and he freaked out. He made a video addressing the article and his deplatforming from YouTube, where his main defense was, get this, what about freedom of speech? So much for freedom of speech, you know? I'm feeling a little bit like Donald Trump at the moment, getting banned <laughs> from everything. Um, you know, you would expect freedom of speech to say what you want on an American platform such as YouTube, but no. Yes, Jason Lightfoot, popular vlogger from the People's Republic of China, a country which explicitly opposes freedom of speech, claims that his was violated. He goes through the article and the first thing you'll notice is that he doesn't actually refute any of the claims. He just keeps saying how he's not funded by the CCP, which is not true due to the amount of times he's appeared on CGTN, a Chinese government mouthpiece. He reads only two paragraphs of the article that critiques his absurd titles and a quote from one of his videos where he goes on about BMW cars. Another title they wrote I, that I said, which I did say, and these are my titles. The world needs to learn from chi China. Again. Is this not true? And then it says, in <laughs> and then he writes about me and says, in one, in one video, he walks around filming BMW cars and says, this is one of the poorest provinces in China. That is, that is also true. I was literally walking around this province, Guizhou, which is one of the poorest provinces in China, and there were BMWs and Mercedes everywhere. Also true. So he's writing about me, but he is writing the truth. This is the truth here, right? And then he says, China has become a beautiful utopia of this world. I'm astonished, astonished by it. Am I lying? Am I lying? Am I lying? He has a good old laugh about it and conveniently doesn't go on to finish the quote where he says, is this not a utopia? Is this not the way the world should be? People say communism is bad. Well, maybe it's not that bad. Take a look at China, for example. Is that bad? This is communism. He also conveniently leaves out the paragraph after that, which points out that what Jason does is actually illegal in China because of their banning of YouTube. Presumably because the authorities who fund him don't want people to know about that. 
I know I've already gone on a bit about Jason, but I just wanted to point out a clip that I think perfectly encapsulates the doublethink of China's YouTube propaganda. In his video, Freedom of Speech in China? I was on TV again! Exclamation point. He talks about how CGTN was banned in the UK, and how BBC World News was banned in China. And, without hesitation, in the same exact breath, he condemns the UK for violating freedom of the press, and praises China for doing the exact same. Just watch. Now, you may have heard recently, uh, in the news, now CGTN, uh, a news channel that I recently appeared on, which is quite weird, has been banned in the UK. Um, and the reason that they banned them is they gave some pathetic little excuse to ban them, right? You know, what happened to freedom of speech, freedom of press in the UK? Why are you, why are you banning uh, other countries? press. So now you may have heard that China is fighting back and now just yesterday I think BBC World News is now banned in China. It's about time if you ask me, you know, after all these years fabricating stories out of thin air. Overall, living in China is complete CCP and CGTN funded propaganda and Jason Lightfoot has absolutely no self-awareness. If you need to laugh at some stupidity, go watch some of his videos, with ad blocker on of course. Don't give him any more money. China's vlogging propaganda is pretty hilarious in how bizarre it is. Their arguments for China being a utopia are usually some kind of whataboutism that you could refute in your sleep. But when watching them and laughing at them, it's easy to forget that what they hide is quite sinister. These videos exist not to show you how lovely China is or the Chinese people are, they exist to hide the totalitarian hell that these people are forced to endure. They exist to hide repression in Hong Kong, oppression in Tibet, active genocide in Xinjiang and, not to mention, the explicit violation of human rights for the 1.39 billion people who call China home. What's more is the reception that these videos receive. The like to dislike ratio is almost 100% positive, so are the comments. I couldn't find one negative comment on any of these videos, which is unusual for even the most innocent videos online. Until recently, I would have believed that these are all genuine reactions from people, but then I uploaded my last video on the Xinjiang genocide. Within the first few hours of uploading, I received 8 dislikes to 10 likes. This wasn't surprising, I was expecting some kind of negative reaction. I then responded to a comment saying the video would be flooded like this, saying the dislikes have already started, lol. Within an hour of my commenting that, 6 of the 8 dislikes just vanished. I've never seen that before in my life, and the only way that could have happened is if six strangers all decided at the exact same time to remove their dislike, or YouTube removed them because they were spam. There are no other reasons for that happening, and there is a possibility that the reverse happens with these propaganda vlogs, but maybe I'm just paranoid. Whatever the reason for this positivity, the result is the same. If you click on one of these videos after getting a recommendation, not knowing anything about China, and see so much positivity, you'll probably think that being pro-China is the correct opinion to have. This is exactly what the CCP wants and what these videos are designed to achieve. These are just innocent looking videos that further Beijing's influence and soft power abroad to hide the dark and disturbing truth of what actually goes on there.